know I count up by the twos. Damn, you gon' count it by the twos. Roll a certified. First, you gotta get approved. You don't. I gotta get approved. What it do? What's happening? What's cracking? K Paso, it's your boy, Damo. Jay Wood. And it's your girl, Devry. And today, y'all, we have another guest here with us. And, uh, for me personally, I want to say that this is somebody I've looked up to. I've been knowing this person over half of my life. And uh, he's a good person that I look up to as far as uh, being a man, a father, and just a, a genuine person, y'all. And uh, his name is actually Pastor Anderson, and he's with us today, y'all. How's it going, Pastor? It's going good. How about yourself? Uh, not too bad, man. So, good. Yes, sir. How's the family? They're doing good. You know, everybody's growing older and making me old. So Right. Uh, yeah. Staying away from that uh, coronavirus yeah, right here. Yeah, <laughs> staying away from the Rona. <laughs> I know it's been going around crazy, man. Everybody's been talking about it and stuff. So yeah. I want to make sure everybody's staying safe. Yeah, stuff. everybody trying, you know, the young, my young son, he's, you know, he's always on the go and trying to keep him safe, but he's doing good. Right, right. Yeah. right. Jay, what was going on, bro? Not, not a whole lot. Still, a lot of things going on in the world today. Um, just ready to. A lot of crazy things, to, right? Yeah, just ready to express them. You know some of this this good uh communication that we we do here at the radio. Dev, how you doing? I'm doing okay. I, I know she's frustrated about some. Yeah, I am. I'm, you know, I'm always frustrated. I'm just frustrated about the climate of the world, honestly. So climate, like you're not talking about weather. You're talking about just. No, I'm talking about like the climate of our world, like our community, like what's going on with like the black people in our country, um, pr police brutality, um, you know, George Floyd. You know, mm -hmm. if we're just gonna throw a name out there. Listen, you ain't alone this week. I know you always got some problems on you every week and stuff. This week, we here with you. So Might as well push them out. Yeah. I think we all heard about the George Floyd situation, correct? The, everything that's going on in Minnesota. And, we better have. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's, you it's know, everywhere. Not even just being black, but especially being black, we should, definitely should have heard about it. Want to give us a summary? Some people probably haven't heard about it. Well, uh, you know, George Floyd, uh, he was actually – being pinned down by the police officers. Uh, I, I honestly don't know what the reason being for them stopping him. Do you know? Yeah. They said he wrote a hot check. No, he had counterfeit, he had counterfeit $20 bill. Mm. I'm hearing a check. I'm hearing two different things. I did hear about the counterfeit, but I heard that he wrote a hot check too. But I think... Something about forgeries. Well. Yeah, forgery. So it was basically money, like money forgery, like something. I think it's all the same charge, yeah. any of those things. Right. So basically he just got confronted about that. And, by the police. Right. Mm -hmm. And the police got him down. They said he didn't resist. That's he, what the people around was saying. It says that in the police statement, he physically resisted an officer. But in the actual video, it shows that he oh, was well, complying. Look, of course, that's what they going to put, you know. But but the officer put his his knee on his neck. Mm -hmm. He but, was face down, so he, can't, he couldn't breathe. For how long? Eight minutes. And he was telling him, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. So that's why you, everybody's saying these I can't breathe shirts. It's just not because it's exactly what he said is I can't breathe. Now they're trying to, like, say it was he had health, pre-existing health. Yeah. Bro, they always got to you know, bring so. up something that to try to alleviate the, the thing that they did. You know what I mean? And, and it wasn't even just that one officer. They, there was another camera angle that came out that showed it was two more officers mm -hmm. pinning them down by the legs yeah. and stuff. And know? one was just watching. Yeah. Or standing around like, how can as, somebody as resist people. and they got you pinned down like that with the knee on your neck? How can you resist? So how can they even use that, that he was trying to resist arrest? My thing you know? is, first of all, like, who do you think you are? Once again, week two, who do you think you are? Like, I don't care if you're an officer of the law. Like, his, the, the, the police even said, like, they did not learn those tactics. Like, they did not learn how to pull somebody down like that. On so, the net, yeah. therefore, you just think you just... You know, King Power. Kong. Untouchable. Yeah. Untouchable. You can do whatever you want to do. And that's a problem. I feel like that's a problem with a lot of police officers. And I don't want to say all police officers, but the one that uh, take their power to the extreme like that, they feel like they untouchable. Like, we can't do shit about the kind of things that they do to us, you know? And that's that's what frustrates me the most, man. They, It's like we, we helpless out here in the streets. It's like we all we can do is sit back and watch. And I know I talked about this on the second episode we did of Streets Approved Radio. Y'all go check that out. But... I, I, what I said in that second episode is that I feel like we actually have to start fighting back. We actually have to start putting our phones in our damn pockets and actually having to step up and do something about it. Because if that's not the case, another situation like this is going to happen. Who knows? That could be a family member of yours, you know? Well, we also got to think about in that same case, and I really want Pastor to give us his 
his opinion, his strong opinion on this, because he's looking at it in two different views. But we also got to think about it too. The people with the phones, if they run up on them police, they gonna get shot too. So it's like it's kind of like a, what do I need to do? What can I do? Because I know for a fact if somebody would have tried to run up on that police, those other officers was ready to put Fire two. Right off we need so, white people though, like white people. We need you, well, yeah. like. I'm not scared to say, like, white people, we need you because, like, I seen this picture on Instagram and it was, like, po uh, people policing the police. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, basically this white man was, like, he saw, like, some cops stopping, like, some young black boys. And basically he just stopped and just watched to make sure everything was going good. And I feel like that's what you need to do because, like, them two police together, they in it together. So they're, like, oh, yeah, let's bully. But if another white man looks and he's, like, I see what y'all are doing. You see me see you. So I feel and like... I want to get in deeper into that one right there, that conversation right there. But I, I do want to hear the, the pastor's what opinion think about, about the situation here. I think that it's it's tragic. Um, it, it's it was it was uncalled for. Hmm. Um, authority does something to people, and they feel like they can do whatever they want to. And, and there's one thing that we must realize, and and the younger people must realize that they do have authority. I remember Chuck D, Public Enemy. Whenever he, he rapped on a song talking about, you know, uh, being drafted and, and he, he all of a sudden realized that they had authority. Mm -hmm. And that is the one thing that we need to realize that, you know, if you get pulled over by the police, they have the authority. And we do have an opinion, but it does not, we're not, a lot of people feel like they're all of a sudden they're a lawyer and they know the law and all, of, you know, and they feel like they're in the right, you may be, but at that at that time, they are they are in charge of the situation. They do have the authority, and they're as afraid of you as 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 you are of them. Now, as far as how do we deal with it? I mean, there's yes, we 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 have to be on our p's and q's, and we have to be responsible for one another. I think that uh, the one thing that, that that separates us is that everybody attacks us in different ways. If we're going to get to the problem and and get to the answer is that we all have to be on one accord. We all have to do the same thing. We all have to have the same mindset. Mm -hmm. We must be as respectful as we possibly can, but we also have to hold them accountable. We hold them accountable by keeping them, by you know, using our phones, uh, also by policing the police. I, I'm not, I don't have any problems with that, but we, all, we do have to stand at, at, at where they say. We have to do what they tell us to do uh, because if you don't, if you run up on them, yes, you, your life is in danger. We see it. We've seen it. Uh, uh, what was the young man that his car broke down and he moved the wrong way and the lady, she shot him. You know, mm -hmm. he that wasn't, you know, he wasn't out there waiting to start trouble, but she felt her life was in danger. And the way the courts look at it, their life is more important than ours. It's just the way it is. But how, what do we do? How do we change that? Um, instead of being proactive and, and, and attacking the situation with our emotions, uh, the one thing that about the civil rights that that was good was they had a plan. They weren't just marching to be marching and, and and singing gospel songs just to be doing it. It was to draw attention to what was going on. Yes, nobody wants to get hit upside the head, but they did it. Uh, I remember when I think back on Montgomery, the the march on Montgomery, mm -hmm. it, nothing happened until a, a white person was killed. Right. And I agree with my sister here that we need. Uh, we need the, our white brothers and sisters to suffer with us. Uh, it, nothing will ever happen as long as we cry and, 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 and shout. We can shout as loud as we want to. We can march up and down the street with no purpose. But we got to have a plan. We've got to sit down, all, everyone sit down. What, you know, for me as a pastor, what is the church going to do? Uh, we're way too silent. Uh, the pastors are way too silent. I know that we want to be political, politically correct and don't want to offend one another. But right is just right. Uh, we have to recognize, one, once again, just recapping what I said, we have to recognize their authority, but we have to have a plan. We can't run off raw emotions because that only lasts for a little while. We've right. got to come up with a lasting plan that unite the streets with the church, uh, those, the common Joe, everybody who's, you know, the whites. They're, they're white people who really want to do something. Right. But, you know, they feel like they're limited just to get on Facebook and hashtag everything. What can they do? How can they help? Well, one thing that you mentioned that I wanted to comment on is the fact that you say we need to be so respectful when they pull us over. And I am always respectful because that's just my nature. But 
I don't think it's fair that like us as black people, we have to be so much more respectful to like any situations when we deal with white people. And even like growing up, like, you know, I, I don't know how old you are, but you've probably heard your grandparents say like, don't be acting your color in front of them white people or don't don't act like that in front of the white people. And it's like as black people, we know we have two different sides. If you're a black person and you're listening to this, you know, we all got it. Like we got the in front of white people, us and we got the other part of us. And that's fine because we could keep that other part to each other it's like a sacred thing but yeah, we change our voice when we got to talk to somebody yeah you know I mean? but i feel like sometimes like i don't want to have to change who i am like mm -hmm. i feel like we should be able to be who we are and it, it's just it's just really just unfair to me that we have to we have to teach our kids like when you do get pulled over like exactly what you said when you do get pulled over make sure you're respectful make sure you're this make sure you're that when can i just be a regular person but we can't yeah. well we say we, we say um you know, it's not fair, but I think it's beyond that now. It's not about it being fair because we know it's not going to ever be fair like that. It's about it being safe, the safest option for you to do. And we know that we have to do it, do that to get the safest out of the situation. Yeah. So being fair, there's a lot of there's a lot of things in the world that we can hit on that's not fair. I mean, mm -hmm. you got first responders like paramedics who get paid thirteen dollars an hour, and somebody that work at Managed Burger King makes more than that. Yeah. I feel like they need to make more than what I make. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, like, it's just as far as just being fair, I mean, I I, I respect that 100%. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think what Pastor was trying to say is we got to take the safest route yeah. until we out of that position because we don't have people around us to witness anything. Yeah. And if we don't have no witnesses, where are the case going to go? It's going to go the right way of the officer every time because, like he said, they have authority and they have the one up over us yeah. But regardless. That, that's been my frustration, though, too, Pastor, is that – I understand that, you know, we got to come together as one. And, we you know, we've been marching and protesting for so long. But look, look, it's 2020 now, and the same things are happening to us day in and day out. And it's like the protests and stuff is not it's not going anywhere for us. It's like it's still we're still stuck in the same position. And I do believe, like, you know, like Devery said, that if, you know, some white people start coming together with us, start locking arms with it and stuff, that may help out too. But Apparently they're not doing that with us as they need to be. I mean, well, there I are feel some like out they there. They stepped up. There are uh, there are some protest, out there. Yeah. No, there are some out there, but I feel like if there's even more like head of corporation type of white people. You know, actually, folks with power can actually come down and step out and help us out. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. when stuff may start changing. Well, we got we got to hit them where it hurts. You know, yelling at them is not going to do anything. It's just going to make them turn the channel. Mm -hmm. We got to hit them where it hurts in their pocketbook. It's when I just, we yep. when we hit them, you know, when they stop making money off us. Because I'm going to say this: this no, generation, radio. You, you know, say what you want. This say. generation is a consumer generation. We, the, our foreparents, my 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 grandparents, they were builders. They were owners. The, they owned land. They were all about uh, free enterprise. They were trying to own their own businesses. Uh, the problem, the, the breakdown was the fact that they uh, they didn't pass it on to us or we didn't want what they had. Mm -hmm. uh, my father owned his own business, but he had a trash business. Well, I was too high, high profile for that, so I didn't want to be a part. But I would have if I would have looked at it from their perspective, I would have been a business owner right now. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to look at it, you know, from their perspective, they. Uh, they were builders, so we live in a generation now that is that is consumers. We we buy more Jordans than anybody. Uh, we eat out. We don't cook anymore. Uh, back in the day, black folks didn't eat at restaurants. They didn't trust them. You know, they they ate at home. They cooked at home. And so, uh, when we take that control out of their hands and and begin to control our own destiny, uh, when you talked about marching, marching was a strategy. We have to think strategically. We when we do when we are, when we approach a problem, we have to think strategically. That's what they did. They just like I said, they just didn't march to say, "Hey, uh, let's just march." They did it because that was one of the strategies they had. Hmm. They had to upset the equilibrium, and then just like in uh, in, in in Montgomery or uh, in Alabama, what they did was they they took the dollars out of their pocket. They stopped riding the bus. Everybody stopped riding the bus. They had a common goal. And so when we look at Amarillo or any, any place in America, we, everybody has a different goal in, in what they want to achieve. Uh, take, uh, take a demonstration. Some people show up to the demonstration just so that they can ride. Some people show up just so they can ride. Everyone has a different agenda as far as uh, 
as far as attacking this thing and what to do during this problem, in order for us to truly have any effect on what we're trying to, the message that we're trying to get across, we have to all be on this one mind. Uh, we all have to be on one accord in, in how we're going to do it. Uh, everybody's agendas are different. Just like you have all these leaders that show up, they all have an agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, they're different agenda. Why can't uh, Jesse Jackson and, and, and all the other guys talk about the same thing? They all want right. to come. And they don't come at the same time they come staggered so that they can, you know, guide it and direct it into their in And that, their make it, that makes us kind of hard to trust them, you know it what is. I mean? Like, y'all saying two different, y'all got two different opinions about stuff, you know what I mean? Like, who do we listen to? Like, y'all yeah. out for just on what you want to go out for, like, your own kind of opinion, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, so. And really, at that, like, I feel like, yes, we are going to have different opinions, but I feel like sometimes I need to be like, hey, you're a little bit more educated than me. You know a little bit more about this situation, and you're a little bit more um, educated on this particular subject, yeah. knowledgeable on this subject. So you know what? Even though I feel how I feel, I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna shut up yeah. because this is for the betterment of us as a whole. And yeah. so I feel like it really is gonna take a lot of that. Like, yes, putting your. We know you got different opinions and emotions, but yeah. just put that to the side for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the major problem, and just taking away from that just a little bit, I think the major problem is that we have stopped developing leaders in our own community. Mm, mm, mm. I think that, you know, it begins at home. Uh, at once upon a time, the church was in, it was major, major in developing leaders for our community. And I think we have stopped. We have, we have just stopped developing our young people. And even for you guys, you know, we have not done a good job in developing you for when we take, when we leave this place. Who's going to do the job when we go? And we've done a, we've, we failed you guys, your generation, and getting you ready for the next generation. And, and for you guys, your families, the young people right now, it's up to you to begin developing them. If anything's going to change, it's going to change within us. Right. We, we can't we got to stop saying white folks and, and, and it, it begins at home. We have to, we have to get off the game, we have to uh, concentrate what we're trying to do, education. We have to go all out to change the system. And even, and even not everybody's for education, but we have to better ourselves in some way, know what's going on around you. We have some people that are so uh, geared towards the party and, 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 and fulfilling you know, their, whatever they want to fulfill. Uh, instead of what is what is our goal? What is our purpose as a mm -hmm. people? What is my what is my personal goal and my personal uh, uh, purpose in my life? Uh, if you can pinpoint that, you can make a difference in not only in your life but in the community's life. So right. here we are right now, in this day and time. What do we do next? And that is where I'm at right now. What what do we do next? What are what are my responsibility to my community? How can I what can I do here? in this place uh, it's, it's enough for me to cry out hey help you know or they did them wrong what can we do yes right now amarillo has you know the black community and the police have a pretty good you know uh, uh relationship mm -hmm. but what if something happens what can we do uh to better that it's not just about us and the police it's about our own community people are that our dollars are leaving it's going across town. People don't even want to come back to the community. Do you know at one point in time, Amarillo, uh, the north side was self-sufficient. Mm. They had they had uh, grocery stores, uh, people owned businesses. You didn't have to go to the south side to do anything. And so what, what happened? Why, why, why the breakdown now? Why is it that we're so dependent and so consumer-driven? Why do we have leaders? What can we do about that right now? So we talk about, we talk about leaders, right? Yeah. I mean, so... As far as education goes, like, I think I can be a leader in that position because um, I, I I do hold, like, several degrees, and I hold a master's degree as well. But I feel like as a leader, they don't listen. What is the problem you run so, into a lot? It's just listening. You talk about laziness a lot. It's, it's, it is it's it is lazy. Uh, not really just – I think people get – um they kind of get, they get a little down or, or offended by – like, our generation doesn't know how to take criticism the right way. Um I mean, you know, even just as a music artist, you know, you tell somebody, hey, you know, it sounds good, but it can be better. That's criticism. But for me, I know how to take that as, man, I need to go back in here and do something about it because he's trying to tell me something. Constructive. But Exactly. But as a leader, I feel like they don't listen. Our the Who they listen to is the other leaders that they got, the ones that got the, 
twenty fours on the cars, and those are the leaders that are being they looking up to and they listening to because that's what they want. Yeah, they don't want something that another leader got. Like, right, they, they following the money. Exactly. They seeing this I person having this and having right. that. It's co- it's becoming materialistic, is what I'm saying. That's mm-hmm. where the leaders are going to be in, into the community. I feel like the older, even the older people that try to lead, I feel like they try to lead to benefit them, and they don't lead to benefit the people under them. Like you want to benefit you and spark your name up and spark your business, but like what is that doing for the the whole community? Yeah, you get what I'm saying. I I feel like our leaders. Even our older leaders, I feel like, like you said, I feel like they've slacked off. But we can we can really expand that and get that going because we got we ho- we still have something that's very powerful, mm-hmm. and that's the church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the church is still powerful, but I mean, you know, and we I, only got so many pastors that has that leadership. Some no, of them are just pastors, not leaders. I don't so. think the church really understands how powerful they really are. You know what I mean? Like it's like one of those things. Like I have like done event planning. And like it takes so long to put an event together. Like we have to have all these contacts with all these people. But as a church, you have an established like group. You have an established time and place. We're meeting here every every this day and this day we're meeting at this time. So you know, like I don't have to send out a note or an event sticker like we already know to meet. So I feel like they already have that one thing. Black people cannot seem to get together. Like seriously. As many times as things have happened in this local community, people get together, they get together one time, the two time, half the amount of people that were at the first mm-hmm. meeting is at the second meeting. And at the third meeting, ain't nobody there or there's no meeting ever planned. You know what I mean? And so I feel like as a church, like, um, I like, I never heard a pastor really say that b- white people are going to have to die too. I mean, you didn't say it just in the, that those words, but mm-hmm. basically like that. And I feel like a lot more pastors are going to have to start like being more realistic with the times that we're in. Cause we're in 2020 now and the nice stuff ain't getting us nowhere. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I think that, you know, for, I grew up, um, when I grew up, the civil rights movement, had just died, but they didn't know it. Um, and and still, I think that they still think it's a lie uh, for some, the older, you know, because they they still they still reminisce on well, Dr. King and Dr. King and Dr. King. But in reality, a lot of them were upset with Dr. King because Dr. King was beginning to uh, uh, to really rub people the wrong way with his message. He was right. But it wasn't according to their agenda. It was going to naturally be a problem if he continued living. Mm. So uh, everybody has deified Dr. King now. And so they, they remember, you know, what happened back then. And that they, so they still, think that, they still think that that can work in today's time. But it, mm-hmm. some of the elements can. But some of those elements need to shift. Some of those elements need to change. The leadership definitely needs to change. You know, even locally, you know, if we look at the NAACP, uh, God bless them. Thank God for them. But it, it needs to, they need to train somebody else. We don't they even know to, who they are. We yeah. should know who they are from, yeah. for one. Yeah. Do you know anybody that's from the I don't, NAACP? I don't, actually do know a couple of people from the NAACP. Because How, well, what are they doing? Um, How do you speak on it? There is some change. There is some change. They are bringing in new uh, leadership. Uh, there's one, I can't remember her name, but she works at Amarillo College, and she's pretty good. And, and so, uh, Ms. Ms. Melody. Graves. Ms. Yes. Melody Graves. Graves. Yes, yes. Ms. Graves. she's yeah. like an amazing person. She really is. And I really do think it's going to take that a lot more younger people getting in the office and stuff, because honestly, as someone who has been a little active, I'm not going to say I was politically active, but I was a little active in the community. It can be so stressful and overwhelming. But you know what else is overwhelming to me right now? getting up in tears because black men are constantly being targeted Mm -hmm. and it's sad because like i mean i'm not trying to get emotional on y'all but like i'm sitting in a room full of black men right now and like any of y'all could be a target like my brothers my son my dad like my uncles everybody and so like we think that this can affect us like to any black people who are not tuning in paying attention to this issue like this is a big issue for us because it could affect any of us like at any time yeah Yeah. You know, not to try to go back on uh, what we was talking about as far as the leaders, but we, we, we're not, we, what we're talking about now as far as how to move and how to get things going and stuff, we are not taught this because I feel like not only do we not have leaders in our lives or just somebody to teach us, you know, everybody want to follow the streets and do that kind of thing, but we don't have any fathers 
to actually come in and tell us. You know, they've, they've been taken away from us. You know, our yeah, generation. I don't, have a, I don't have a dad on my it, side. Me either, but that's, that's, oh, yeah. that, that's, that's what I'm, I'm getting to. I'm just to, trying to bring it up, is that yeah. None of us grew, grew up with our father in our life. You know what yeah. I mean? And so we don't have nobody to tell us, no, this is the wrong way to do it. You got to go about this way. You know what I mean? So yeah. that, that I think that's the main, that, that, your father's supposed to be your main leader in your life. And that's what I, I take so strongly in being a father to my three little girls because I, I know what it's like to grow up without a father and I know how important it can be and you know, they having them grow up with one in their life, and so, and like with my oldest daughter, man, it, it, it tripped me out the other day because my uh, she's only nine years old, and she texts me. Oh, she she was with my wife. My wife texts me, and she told her she said, "Uh, I want a T-shirt made with all the people that was killed by police on it, or whatever. That way, I go on TikTok and make a dance for them. Mm. You know what I mean? And that right there, it was so powerful to me. And I texted my wife back, and I told her, I said, well, you know, we creating a monster. You know what I mean? Because uh, I was smiling so hard. Uh, and when I mean a monster, I mean like somebody that's already seen this kind of stuff and what's going on that's going to actually get out there and make a change. You know yeah. what I mean? And so that's why I feel like it starts. It starts from the, you know, the head of the household, which is which will be me in my case. And it brings it on down to our kids and stuff. And that, I feel like that's what we didn't have growing up. As a black man, we don't know how much power we have. And... We have, we're, we have to purposely change the direction. Uh, my father, he didn't have a father. Uh, his father died when he was young. He had to grow up with his grandma and, and his uncles. Mm -hmm. But he, made, he, he purposefully became a good father to change the next generation. Right. And so for every father that, is, that didn't grow up with a father, uh, it, it, they have to purposely change because every father ha has every man that every you know that has influence o over somebody else they affect the next hundred years mm. if we knew how powerful that 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 it was for us to be a father uh we it would change i know that when i became a father i you know everything changed for me i, I got off the game i i love playing xbox or you know oh man that's a tough the, one for me we're yeah. <laughs> gonna, gonna be on tonight man. <laughs> yeah. when, I, when i was a father watching my son and, and, and being there for him became more important than being on a game. Of course, it's different now. You know, we had, you know, the games is, you know, they're more advanced now. Yeah. It just imagine. ain't Super Mario's now. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit more Mad, realistic Mad's now. a little bit different. Yeah. Right? You know, stick figures and stuff, you know. But it, it's important that, to take our position and what we have to, seriously. I think at some point in time, we got to realize that it's not about us. It's about the next generation. And as a father, I look at my son's success says so much more about me than what I drive right now. Mm. My, my son being able to be a father and be a successful black man is way more, is way more important to me than what I achieve. Right. Because he's going to, he, he's, he has to, he's got to uh, uh, advance me. He's got to do a hundredfold more than I did or my, uh, what I did was in vain. And when we look at our, as a father, in, in, in molding and shaping the next generation, if they don't succeed us, see, I think that's what's wrong. We're trying to compete. And you got, that's why you got old folks still in the club. You know, let it go. You know, it's time, it's time to really, truly invest in the next hundred years. Right. right. Uh, well, we talk about, like, success. Uh, I want to capitalize on that topic a little bit. Um, you know, that, that's what I strive for every day and I wake up for is I want to be better a person than I was yesterday. But our success and the definition of success, I think, is different for everybody, right? So we always look at different things. Some people might be money. Some people may be, hey, I'm successful once I do this. But I feel like where we, as black people, where we fail at is we're always trying to build the foundation. Mm -hmm. Like the, the generation before me or my father or whoever, you know, they never built the foundation. So here I am working on the foundation when I should have been working on building the next skyscraper. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I feel like we've never start, like we always get knocked down. We got to start right back over. Mm -hmm. Now you got generational wealth with like the white community. Mm -hmm. They've already, they got the foundation. Yeah, they, They're still steady building. So it's, it's real harder for us to create a business because like Walmart, whoever started Walmart, that was a long time ago. He don't get to see that while how big Walmart is booming now today. Mm -hmm. But he started that two, like a, a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. and we're just now starting now. So it's real hard to have those same businesses or the business mind, you know, from a business it's aspect hard to have that mind. for being successful. Because we're always steady building. I feel like I'm a, I'm a slave within trying to help, you know, the younger generation. Yeah. 
Like we ain't left running yet. We still walking. We ain't handed the baton off. You got you got to practice yeah. that kind of mentality. You know what I mean? It just it ain't something you just gonna get overnight. I feel like you actually have to practice, and that and that kind of goes back to something where you left off, Pastor, when you said that we have to start. We have to get out the clubs and start doing being more active and getting more, you know, just being more smart with things. And that's 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 not saying he's not saying not to go out and stop partying and stop having fun like that. But you got a responsibility you got to take care of. You know, it's it's, it's a few. It's a few of us black people here on, in the United States, period. You know what I mean? And so we have a, a big responsibility on our shoulders. And us being in the club every night, you know, drinking and smoking and doing all that every night, that's not going to help our community grow. And I'm pretty sure most of us, all we all have kids. You know what I mean? And so us doing that kind of stuff, it's not, I mean, we're not building upon nothing. You know, we're not training our minds in order, like you said, to try to build skyscrapers instead of just, you know what I mean, little buildings or whatever, you know, so. Yeah. We just don't feel like we have it. You know, like a lot of people just doubt it. In the community, they see, like, I'm I'm just not a big per. Like, we've I've had a discussion with, like, some of my friends, and they're like, man, you, like, truly blessed. Like, you, like, you, like, the, the you know, like, you, like, the one of many. And I and I don't I don't see that because I see, like, I, I get up every day and I work hard towards something, not only in my day job, but I'm doing multiple things. Like, I'm killing myself out here, and it's became my new norm. If I'm not out here, like, doing multiple things I feel like I'm not doing anything but they like you're doing everything but I still feel behind because you know as 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 Damo being you know probably my best friend my, my closest brother you know like I just feel like if he ain't winning then I'm not winning too yeah. so I feel like I haven't not I haven't got that far yet they say if you're if your team ain't winning you ain't winning and, so. and it's, I think it's true because that's a mentality you can have everything in the world but if you don't have nobody to share it with it's irrelevant yeah so true. That's true. I think that that's, that's a good way to, to look at life. Uh, and I think that what once upon a time we looked at life like that. Um, we don't have the same neighborhoods we used to where I grew up in a neighborhood. And, li well, I live in one now to where I know all my neighbors. And, and if something happens, we see about each other. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's falling. That's, that's falling short. Uh, but back to fatherhood, you know, we really truly have to push. Like my daughter... Uh, growing up, man, she, you know, man, I, she thought that I was so hard on her, but she's in three, in six years, she has three degrees, mm. you know, she's, you know, she's on her way, she's doing her thing, uh, simply because, you know, we, we put it in her, but on the other end, you know, it's naturally for us to push our, our daughters, but we have to start pushing our sons, I think that we've, we've, we've hindered them, we've allowed them to get way off, to get, you know, too, we're too soft on them, you know, mm -hmm. especially uh, mothers who have single parent homes. You know, they, they, they're so easy on the son because they don't they're trying to protect them. And, you know, or they treat their son like they man. Yeah. Yeah. That's the He's the man of the house. That's and, not and, how it's yeah, supposed to that's be. That's not it. That's not but the it. man is missing. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, it's like a, a yeah. position that we have to fill because yeah. I was in a single parent home yeah. and I felt like I had to protect my mom. Like, yeah. I, that shouldn't be my my focus shouldn't be on just protecting my mom. I yeah. should have. A, but you a you got a son that. now though, right? Yeah. yeah, you got a son, so now you able to kind of you know what I mean. Uh, I'm the man of the house. I'm just playing. I know, I'm, I'm not trying to say that. But what I'm trying to say is that now you can kind of build that mentality. Him, you got to be you got to be stern on him, like which I already yeah. know you are. You know what I mean? So you got like the pastor said, you got to be kind of stern on him to be a leader out here. You know, you got to kind of mold him and teach him, okay, the, the way he got to move throughout here, you know what I mean? Yeah. Keep him away from the streets and stuff but like I, that. I, yeah. I think it's real scary, though. Like, becoming a leader is scary. It makes you more of a target. It takes a very strong person because all you got to do is knock the leader off and the whole colony falls. Mm -hmm. And it's it's real true. You but got you got our I mean, leaders, just, like, you got our leaders, like, some successful leaders, like, here recently. Like, you got somebody like Bill Cosby. They knocked him down. You got somebody like they brought up something that was forty years ago. Uh, we not we not up, Jordan. No, I'm, no, I'm gonna <laughs> no. bring it up. Listen, no, listen. I'm, I'm gonna bring it up. We got somebody like Nipsey Hussle. Okay. His, he started to, and you don't know what Nipsey. And you used to talk about that, but you still don't know what he did in his personal life. Who? So you thinking you know because of Bill Cosby, but we really don't know what's going on with that case. But There's anyway, a lot of people. Yeah, but, but I'm saying you. Mar I'm marking successful people that has been brought down. People that community Okay, but you need to, to say stuff about like people that have been brought down based upon like things that were like floofs or not that good. Not about people what who I'm have been brought about, down because of sexual assault. What I'm what I'm saying about that case is brought down is what this man has became. I don't know what he's done in his personal life. We got it. He's came real successful, and I'm saying they brought something forty years ago that they could have brought up between a long time ago. But when he got successful, they brought it up. That's what I'm saying. 
I'm not going to fault for anybody for what they did. I don't know what he did. It, but I'm saying when he got to be a leader. But he really but listen, been but, successful. But, I mean, I know he was going to start it, making moves and stuff, like major moves and stuff. Right. But, like, yes, they should have been said it. That's their fault. As a woman, let me just say, I've been put in some uncomfortable situations. It was my fault. But guess what? Sometimes we don't know how to say stop. We don't know how to say no. Like, we don't know. Like, so until you're a woman and you're put into an uncomfortable situation, that's just not your space. No, no. Well, and when it, when it comes to leaders, too, I, do, I just don't think of them having just to be successful as far as making so much money or doing this kind of thing. You know what I mean? When I look at a leader, I look at somebody that's like actually Cody. leading. It's just, or even a pastor here. That's a yeah. leader to me. You know what I mean? He's actually getting out here and he's leading the people. He's coming on to our show to kind of talk to the people. That is leading. Yeah. That you know is what I mean? leading. You don't, you don't, and it's not about money and the wealth you generated or anything like that. It's about how you move and how you're talking to the people and where I'm you're not, taking them. I'm not necessarily talking about the money portion. I'm talking about the people that follows behind them, though, like the impact, basically, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, as far as like Tupac had a real, real big impact on the people. But he didn't use his leadership. He didn't use it in the right way, his impact, to lead the people. And when he tried to, he was killed. How That's what I'm saying. It's scary. I've been preaching for 20 years. I've been pastoring maybe half of that. So before that, were you living a life of sin? Yes. Yeah. So before that, like how... Okay, where was I going with this? Like before you went into that, like what... Switch his mentality. What switched your mentality when you first started going? And then how did you... Like, be able to combat that. You know what I'm saying? Well, my father was a pastor, and so being a preacher's kid was kind of tough, you know, and uh, just a lot of judgment. It seemed like uh, I was under a lot of attack. And um, so, you know, I, I wanted to be like my friends, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I can remember being in church on New Year's Eve while my friends was kicking it. You know, and I, I hated that, man. I said, I can't wait till I get out of here. And because the church was so, um, so stringent, so, you know, just hard to, you know, mm -hmm. judgmental. It's just nothing changed. It's still, you still got people in there judging. Oh, yeah. and, and, you know, it's just what I call being modern day Pharisees, legalistic. Uh, you still have those people like that. And I hated that in church. And, and there were hypocrites in church. Mm. I was a hypocrite too, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to face my own hypocrisy. So I, you know, I blamed everybody else to, that kept me from church, my own sin and, and whatnot. But yes, I, I once I graduated from high school, I, I, I said I'm never going back to church uh, because I, I want to be real. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, in the Got street, it. you know, I'm being real. I'm being true to myself, and so that's what I, I pretended to do. Uh, and I knew that uh, something within me wasn't never right. It seemed like everything I tried, I had several good paying jobs and it just always fell through. It seemed like I was never where I needed to be. I, and I watched people su succeed and go on, all my friends, and I became, you know, a, a little depressed simply because I wasn't not doing what I had dreamed that I, I wanted to do. But I knew that God had a plan for my life. Mm -hmm. And I was not, I was disobedient to what he would have me to be. I was trying to run away from what God was, you know, not everybody's called to preach, but everyone is called to something. Mm -hmm. God has tailor fitted you, your circumstance and, and who you are, your makeup to be something in his kingdom just right. for him. Uh, no matter where you come from, no matter your, your journey, uh, it, it, it works out so that God can use you where you are. 